Hey, and welcome to Winning Conversations. We have a really great treat for you today. This is actually part one of a conversation that Andy and I had with Trey and Heather Johnson. They, you may know them as the cowboy that comes to our church once in a while who preaches, but they have a phenomenal story of faith and restoration, and we really want you to hear it. So our conversation went on for quite a long time. So we broke this conversation into two episodes. First episode, we really kind of focus on Heather and how God brought her into the place where she is now. And it is a phenomenal, powerful story. So I want you to enjoy it now, but please tune in next week also to hear the second part of our conversation. So without further ado, let's jump right in. How are you guys doing today? Doing great. We're good. Great. Yeah. We got it's rainy day. Yes. Beautiful yes. rainy day. It's been raining all the way from San Antonio. Yeah, you guys just drove in on a yes. on a quick drive from San Antonio. Yes. It was yeah. ice last week and then we flew to Tennessee, drove to Arkansas, preached there for three days, had four services there, then flew from Memphis to San Antonio. We've been at a conference the past couple of days, meetings all day into the night and Got up early this morning and did a leadership teaching and got in the car and, and here we are. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Ta-da. Ta-da. yeah. <laughs> well, we're honored to have you all. This is a fun, uh, kind of a newer ministry to Heritage of Faith, the Winning Conversation. So you guys are kind of the people that we love to sit down and talk with because your lives are so dynamic. And I'm really, really glad that we were able to catch some time yeah. in between conferences. Yeah. Between yeah. Trips. So right. You preach on Wednesdays a lot. And mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of people might not know who you are exactly. Like they see your face, they see you at church sometimes, but they don't know you. Yeah. So I think it's a good opportunity to get to know you all. That's so funny because the last time I taught, because Dr. Seville always says, you know, I'm the worst attending member here. And I <laughs> made that comment up there. And Pastor Jones said, no, you've got him beat. You are the worst attending member here because <laughs> we're always gone, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we see your name pop up on the schedule. And I'm like, and they're like, Trey, I'm like, the cowboy. And they're like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I know the cowboy. <laughs> We really want to hear your story and kind of how you guys got to where you were. And I know, Heather, your story is super incredible about where God's taking you. So can we just start there? Sure. Okay. okay. So tell us about your life. Okay. Just start. Just flow. Just, just go. go. Well, okay. I'm All in. right. Here we go. <laughs> yes. Um. So my parents divorced when I was eight. And um, I have a little brother who's four years younger than me. And uh, my parents live the same kind of lifestyle. They, um, they both partied and drank. And um, so... That was my normal. Uh, my kids now, they don't, it's two different lifestyles, you know, because we do, we are a blended family. And so we are church, we are ministry. That's how we live. And then on the other side of our kids, the others, I call them the others, they <laughs> live a complete contradiction to that. But anyways, right. um, so eight parents divorced. Um, my dad leaves the home. My mom's always working. Um, and... I made that inner vow within myself, like I was, because the partying looked like fun, right? Like, Mm -hmm. that looked like fun, and so that's what I was going to do. When I was old enough to do it, that's what I was going to do, and I did. And um, I started, like, stealing my mom's wine. I don't know if I was 15 or 14, but there was a time there where we would steal my mom's wine, me and my friends. And then, you know, you started smoking the cigarettes, and then you started smoking the pot, you know, like at 15, 16. And then you started doing the harder drugs, and I dropped out of high school my senior year. And I was actually really good at track. Um, I was pretty fast. Um, But you cannot run very fast when you're doing drugs. It just does not go together. Um, And so I dropped out of high school uh, like a few months before I was supposed to graduate and um, continued to do like the methamphetamines. Like I didn't see my parents for like two years, just that whole lifestyle yeah, Yeah, Yeah. that you're you're in. And um, in that two-year period, um, I ended up getting pregnant. I was uh, 19, and I had been in the drug world for so long that you see babies born into the drug world and you see that they're not okay. And I was like, in not my mind, there it. Was, it was a no-brainer. Like, I have to get an abortion, like, because I've been on drugs for two years. Like, I hadn't had a period in two years. So in my mind, like, how did, I mean, I know how I got pregnant, but how did I get pregnant? Sure. And so I have an abortion. And, you know, I don't deal with the abortion, like, in my mind, that was the right thing to do until me and Trey are married several years into our marriage. And I hear him ministering and Trey knew about the abortion. I told him, sure, but we'll yeah. get to that part later. Yeah. But, and I heard here him ministering to this lady on the phone, trying to convince her, like, do not abort this baby. This is not of God. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I did, like what I did was wrong. And I was like, 
all those years later, it came back and oh, finally you were addressing it. Finally. Yeah. Yes. And I mean, cause we'd been married two, three years, two years and God had already showed me this, all this about me, but never until that moment. And it was like, whoa. So it took, um, I don't know how long, but I went home and got all these studies on how to heal from the abortion and how to make it right. And, um, cause I'd never repented. Like, cause in my mind I wasn't wrong. And so I had to repent and just walk through all the shame and the guilt. And then like the grief of what I had done, like I had a baby, like, mm-hmm. and, but thankfully I know that my baby is sitting at the feet of Jesus. Right. Um, and so that is really cool. That part <laughs> that the baby is but sitting at his feet um, as a little light. Cause Jesse to plant us, if y'all heard. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right, that's, so you know, that's totally what came to my mind yeah. when you were saying that. I don't know. Okay. This. So Jesse had, you want to. He had that experience where he went to heaven. Mm-hmm. I think it was in the 90s or 80s. I don't know. That's when Close I saw Encounters the of the Heaven kind? Yeah. Or, or, kind or yes. Like that. yes. And he goes and he sees all this stuff in heaven and he sees babies that like tons of Chinese babies and stuff like that that have been aborted and they're all at the feet of Jesus. Wow. He's like walking so, with Abraham yeah. or Moses or somebody and he's naming, you know, and, but he sees all these little lights yeah. and they're all at the, the feet wow. of Jesus mm-hmm. and he's like Abraham or whoever he's walking with. What? Mm-hmm. And he's like, those are miscarried babies or aborted babies oh, and I was like okay and that's so peaceful and comforting mm-hmm. knowing you know yeah. and so you and didn't w- actually lose the baby yeah right yeah and so and that's very comforting like when I minister that to women who have aborted babies or have miscarried that have never really walked it out that is so powerful and you can just see it like yeah oh my baby's safe with that's Jesus awesome. yeah so that was at 19 um like early 19 so I just have a question though. Yes. So when you minister to people, mm-hmm. do you see people with the same experience where they haven't ever dealt with it or they didn't see it as wrong at the time? So it's like within their conviction, there's, there is no conviction mm-hmm. in that decision. All of the above. Cause I have had grannies come up to me and of course it just, um, when you have grannies come up to you with tears running down their eyes, like I got an abortion because I didn't know what to do at the time. And you're thinking, I didn't know abortions were a thing like back in your day because they're so old. And I don't mean that negative to the older people. I'm just like, in my mind, abortion was just a newer thing, not an older thing. And I don't know, just lack of knowledge. (laughs) You sound, make myself sound really smart sometimes. (laughs) Um, But it's, it's all of the above. And there's been some girls that used it as a form of, Birth control? Yeah. 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 And and in my mind, I'm thinking, and then I'm like, well, they just don't know any better. Mm -hmm. They just don't know any better. Um, And so it's all of it. I mean, some of it is, you know, drugs, alcohol. Some of it's just, and I had one mom when I was in Virginia, West Virginia, not too long ago doing that. A mother of several kids telling me, you know, I was going to abort my first kid because I just didn't want to have a kid, but I'm so glad I didn't. And I was thinking, wow. I mean, the thought, the train of thought of women sometimes, like, mm-hmm. like you can just, yeah. but once you know what you know and the Lord gives you a revelation of it, there's no. Well, there's no condemnation. And then there's just a ton of compassion, like when I hear women's stories. Yes. So I went through several different Bible studies. Um, I don't remember. It was mm-hmm. at least a month Um and it was really cool. You know those willow angel things? You know those wood carving things? Okay, well, I had two of them, and we were moving into this new house, and I was putting up, and one of them is an angel holding a baby, and the other is a mama and a little girl. And um, and I just thought these were so cute when I got them. Like they, somebody gave them to me as wedding gifts, or not wedding gifts, but when I had Chloe or whatever. And But when I was unpacking them from the box, I heard heard the Holy Spirit say, this is your baby in heaven. And I was like, oh, wow, because it was all at the same time of, you know, me unpacking all the hurt and all just the repressed Mm -hmm. feelings and emotions. And I was like, wow. And that little angel is still in our living room on our little. Yep. So didn't the Lord show you his give you his name? Oh, yeah. His name is Jonathan. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it was it was quite the process. It wasn't very fun at all um but it was necessary and so i think sometimes us as women i know guys can put stuff on a shelf and not deal with it and just and like when i was in prison i had to and i can totally relate to guys how they do that but then also as a woman not so go back to the guy thing because the guys can have these emotions have these feelings put it on a shelf close the door and walk away from it and not think about it anymore but us as women we're like you know we got all these different things going on constantly thinking and our brains are constantly Mm -hmm. thinking and moving and um but that's something that 
I think when you have hurt and trauma like that, that like you, it's a form of survival. I know like yeah, when I went to right. prison, it was a form of survival. Yes. Disconnect, put it over here. Don't think right. about it. Don't talk about it. Don't shine light on it. And just, and then that becomes a normal and it's not really supposed to be normal. Yeah. So, yeah. So got through it, got healed. Mm -hmm. And so when I minister, it's usually from a place, I mean, because in the early beginning stages of ministering to women about abortions, it was still kind of eesh, like the devil would try to shame you. Or to, right. But now it's like there is no shame there. And some were, how can you like do that so unemotionally? It's like, it's not that I'm unemotional. I've dealt with it. Right. I know that I'm forgiven and I'm, go I'm, I'm going right. on, but I'm here to help you. But if I'm up there bawling and squalling, that's not really going to help you. Yeah. Like, so to be able to detach the emotion from it, it's because... I've dealt with it. It's right. been forgiven. And I, it's just done deal. Yeah. It's not who I am. That's not where I'm at. And so that's how I can minister from that place of dominion and authority. And right. Just that's kind strength. of the separation between soul and spirit. Like you're ministering to their heart, to their spirit, man. Yeah. And you have to kind of pull the, the soul piece away, which I think a lot of people get into that when they minister. It's all about mm -hmm. like an emotional thing, but, and it can be emotional, but at the same time, it's like, the spirit is what the answer it has the answer yeah you know it's a word that ministers to your spirit so. absolutely so yeah well tell us a little bit more about what happened after that um so then um my so my granny was all my granny always took me to church my granny was baptist um and my mom you know they we went to church on the holidays or the important things or whatever in vacation bible school during the right. school year or whatever or not school year but summer yeah right. um so granny would always read me the bible and so i knew about god um, but I never got saved until I was 19 at this Heaven's Gates Hellfire or Flames. I say it wrong every time, but whatever. It's this Baptist <laughs> thing where they put it on and it's a production. Y'all probably know what it is. Yes. No. I think I do. Yeah. It's and very powerful. It is. For salvations and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Because it, it just shows you like you can be a good person all day long, but until you accept Jesus yes. as your Lord and Savior, like you will go to hell no matter what kind right. of a good person you are. And I was like, oh, wow. Because I remember my brother getting saved when I was really little. And I'm thinking, how come I don't want to get saved yet? But I didn't until I was 19 after um, the abortion. Um, I got saved and I got baptized in the lake there in San Angelo. Um, but I continued to live the same kind of life. Nobody discipled me. Um, and so, and I'm thinking that it was my environment. So I move away from the place that I'm, the town that I'm moving because it was the people, it was the town right. and not knowing that it was me yeah. and my heart and wherever I went there, I was. So then I moved to Fort Worth and got involved with even more dangerous type of people <laughs> and then ended up on heroin and so but that was a very fast track the heroin will I mean because it like grips you pretty quickly I'm um, so I handful of treatment centers all the jails why, why did you quit doing heroin tell that part of the oh the story. well I quit doing heroin well because I would go to the drug spots and I would see the girls standing on the corner or the girls on the drugs and I'm thinking I'm not going to be like that. Like, I don't want to be that person. I don't want, and I, and I say, cause I don't want to, um, Holy Spirit, help me. Um, some of those females put themselves into positions to be prostituted and they sold their bodies for that. And I was like, that's not what I'm going to do. Even though I sold my soul in a mm -hmm. sense to the drug addiction, I never, that wasn't a line that I crossed. I just didn't get there, thankfully, but yeah. I got to a lot of other places. Yeah. So I never, when I say that, never want somebody to think, oh, so because I prostituted myself, I'm not, you know, sure. I can't be. I understand that. Yeah, and yeah. That, that's not my heart about it at all because sin is sin. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then people were dying and then people were in front, of, you know, like in front of you and you're like, this is like real life. Like, oh my gosh, like I don't want to die like that. And then I overdosed a few times. And so it was just, it was time to kind of drew a line in the sand and said, yes. no more. Yeah. Am I missing anything? No. Okay. And so then I went to several different treatment centers, got arrested a few more times. And then finally the last arrest, the, uh, attorney that I went to, who was like, I'm a recovered alcoholic and I am not going to help you until you go to treatment. And I was like, well, I'll go to this detox. He's like, has that worked for you? Look at all these detoxes yeah. you've been to. Has that really helped? And I'm like, okay, fine. And I had done the NA 12 step thing, um, but you know, half-heartedly. And so then I went to the 12, the 
it was a 30 day to 60 day program. I only got to say 30 days because of the insurance money part or whatever. And I went and it was just one of those things. Like I knew it was time. Like I didn't want to live like that. I didn't want to be like the people that I saw. And I had this hunger on the inside of me because it was a funny story. I would be the girl in the hotel room that wanted to talk about Jesus. And so my spirit man, you know, cause I got saved when I was you 19. Alive, yeah. yeah. But I, I kept doing drugs. And so I'm in the hotel room doing drugs, but wanting to pull out the Bible and let's talk about Jesus. And they're like, who is this girl? Are you a cop? And I'm like, no, I'm not a cop. And let's talk about Jesus. Like, do you know what the rainbow really means? And they're like, who are you? I don't know. I love Jesus. Don't you love Jesus? Let's not right. talk about Jesus. Like, oh my gosh, you know, the conviction of them. And I'm just like, just, let's, let's talk about yeah, Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> and they're like, funny. okay. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't think it was funny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You need to leave. <laughs> And so um, then I came home and thought I was getting my life right, worked the program, stayed clean. Like I stayed clean from that point forward and came home. And then I got this really good job, you know, and I'm thinking, oh, this is a really good job. It's got benefits. It's paying well, because most of the time when they ran my background check, that stopped a lot of stuff for me. Um, if they ran a background check and I got this closed door pharmacy job and then nutshell version of it because it's really long um, I worked there 18 months and I knew when I started working there that something wasn't right because I used to run the streets so I know that type of drug dealing some. behavior you know yes so you have some street smarts mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know drugs are coming in one way going out another way I'm like this is okay great and um feds come in like something out of a movie and I'm like you've got to be kidding like guns drawn and I'm like this is not really happening oh it was really happening and we all went to jail um I because I had already had state charges was automatically in a different point category with the feds they do a point system with the feds and so that was two years of pre-trial of them trying to get me to well all of us to they were just trying to con you know how they work and so that was two years and in that two years, I met my daughter's father, um, which is one of those. So when you're broken on the inside and you aren't healed and whole on the inside, you attract brokenness. And that's what I attracted, of course. And it was one of those, you meet the guy and then the second date is in a U-Haul because you think, oh, I'm so in love, right? The whole lust thing. And so that's what happened. And so the second date was in a U-Haul. I know, right? I'm thankful for deliverance. Yeah. <laughs> hey. He's like, bless yeah. the Lord. <laughs> I just love watching you. I wish this was on video because Trace is sitting there just enjoying the story because he, he knows it all. Yeah. yeah. But like he knows the end. He knows yes. where, you, yes. where God brought you. Yeah, so. thankfully, right? It is just yeah. the goodness of God. It really <laughs> is. I mean, it's... And to see... Like when she's talking about um, going through job with Jonathan, you know, just seeing the hurt and the pain, but the revelation of God's goodness and God healing her heart and her coming out of that, uh, this hole and at a new place, you know, it's been just a <laughs> false <shot. laughs> It's um, fantastic. Just seeing just her passion for God and her willingness for God to, Healer and what he's doing with her now. I mean, it's just, it's a miracle. I mean, it really is. It's the goodness of God and I just love her, love her heart. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's that scripture that talks about walking through the fire and not smelling like smoke. Yeah. And that's when I think of you, Heather, that's kind of what I think of. Like, you have this story, but when I see you, I mean, nobody sees that. They no. see Jesus no. on the inside yeah. of you, right? Like, that's so cool. So uh, I never would have, I mean, the first time I met you, I never would have had any inclination, not because of the outside of you, because of the Spirit of God on the inside of you. Yeah. And the that's goodness good. of God. So Thank you. I want you to be encouraged with that. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. as heavy as this story can be, feel. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's real. It's, yeah. It's, it's yeah. really real. And God yeah. really goes to those places and brings you out. Anyway, yeah. continue. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so her dad, um, I got pregnant, um, and I didn't think that I would ever be able to get pregnant because I didn't think God would ever allow me the opportunity to get pregnant again. And so, and it was a horrible relationship. I mean, oh my gosh, it was horrible. He was so mean, verbally abusive, um, ran around on me all the time, but it was one of those things like it was in that two year period. I knew I was going to prison, like 
just wait it out. You're going anyway. Right. And then I got pregnant and I was like, oh, how did this happen? <laughs> like we barely even saw each other. Cause like he was running a bar or whatever. So we were like passing and I had a full-time job that I was working 60 hours a week. And so we didn't see each other, which is probably why it stayed is going as long as it did. Cause we never were around each other. But when we were, Oh man, it was just, he was so, it was horrible. Um, and I got pregnant and I'm like, okay, Lord, like, this is not funny. Like, okay, so I'm pregnant. <laughs> now what am I going to do? Cause I know I'm going to prison. And, um, I got sentenced to 22 months in a federal prison when I was eight months pregnant with Chloe and the judge. Um, I remember the little lady that did the, the interview, they try to interview before trying to, you know, just gather information or whatever. I remember her face when I walked into the courtroom, she was like, oh my gosh, like she's eight months pregnant. And she was just like in shock that, because when she interviewed me, I wasn't pregnant and, but here we are eight months later and I'm pregnant and I'm pregnant. Very pregnant. Yeah. And I can just, I see the, like, because she was the one that was recommending the sentence, sentencing for me. And I, and it, I will never forget her face. And it's not like it was, it was just shock. Like, oh my gosh, I'm fixing to send this mother, that kind of look on her face. Um, and so the judge sentenced me to 22 months. He gave me two months though, because I was eight months. So I induced Chloe early and I had her um, early and i spent two months with her and then turned myself in. And, uh, that was horrible. <laughs> that was like, mm. so, Oh yeah. You know? And, um, I remember being in the hospital room and I'm, I would, well, when Chloe was little, I used to put the little headphones on them, you know, and I would read the little baby stories to her in the Bible or whatever. And her dad would get so mad. I'm like, whatever. Like this is, this is not your baby. <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah. but don't right. tell me I can't read the word over my kid. Sure. And then when we were in the hospital, I remember, and they're inducing me, you know, trying to get me to you know, have the baby. And I was watching Joel Olstein on TV and he was like, if you don't turn that off, I'm leaving. Then leave. <laughs> like I'm like, you know, like, you know what you're doing is wrong. Like I knew the relationship was wrong. I knew having the baby outside of wedlock was wrong, but she wasn't wrong. Mm -hmm. Her purpose wasn't wrong. And that's why I'm so thankful for Trey. And because he's restored to her, the father that she's never had and he, she gets to see what stability is and she gets to see what a loving father a stable man who doesn't waver from his word and so I'm just so thankful for just when God restores something you know he makes it better than before and it's just like thank you Jesus so I had Chloe turn myself in that was hard sitting there at the prison holding your baby like okay but my mom brought her to me every weekend and so there was only two weekends I didn't get to see her just because of the ice, you know how Texas weather is. And um, I got out and when I got out, well, when I was in prison, I did the whole, what everybody does, found Jesus in prison. But you got to remember, I, I was saved a long time ago. I just went after God. I was like, okay, like, I don't know how, I don't know what. And just was in everything Bible that there could be. I was there all the Beth Bob. Beth Moore Bible studies that women would bring into the prisons. I was there and I was learning and I was growing and feeding my spirit, man. Cause I was always hungry for the word. Like when I would go to the NA meetings or whatever, and they'd want to pray, like, let's talk about Jesus. Oh, you can't talk about Jesus in here. What do you mean? You can't talk about Jesus in here. You realize like your higher power, you realize what that is, right? Like it's God. It's not a doorknob. It would make me so mad. I think I made them mad, but it's okay. <laughs> 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 and so I got out, I started going to church and that's when I found the, that church just down the street. And, right. um, I got involved with the women's group and you got to know, like before I went to prison, I was like, I keep women out here just because of the lifestyle I had lived women. They weren't honest. They cheated, you know, with your boyfriend or your man, they'd stab you in the back. Right. And I just had this, but hurting people hurt people and all yeah. the women I was hanging out with, they were hurting. And so that's what women do, you know, when you're hurting and, so I go to church, I get involved and I've got this Bible study going in my house now. And my mom helped buy me a, a house when I got out. And so I have this nice little cute little, you know, starter home and me and Chloe are going to church and I have the little Bible study that I'm having at my house and all the little, the women that I'm attached with, they all have kids. And so it was like, Community. okay, yes, thank you, Lord. Like I'm on the right track. And then I meet Trey. And I remember when we met, I was like, okay. So on the second, the first date, I was like, oh, I'm so in love, right? Like he's <laughs> like, he's a cowboy. And he's like a strong, you know, cause it takes a strong person just because I'm a strong person, but 
I don't, I didn't need a man that I could tell what to do. Like I need you to tell me what to do. Um, and well, to be your leader, to yes, be to leader. be my leader. I don't <laughs> want to lead you because yeah. like, if I can like lead or beat you up, like that's just not cool. You know, you want a strong man. Yes. 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 And yeah. so yeah. if I can beat you up, but you know what I mean? Some guys are just like, anyways, yeah. I, I needed a strong man. And the second date, I remember I told him, I was like, okay, so I got some stuff to tell you. <laughs> and I just laid it all out for him, you know, and, and in that, some of the stuff I kind of skipped over, but I, from the time I was 15 till right before I started dating Trey there, I was in this abusive relationship on again, off again, on again, off again, several years of not talking to him. And then right before I started talking to Trey, he started trying to call me back, you know, call and weasel his little way back into my life. And my mom was like, Heather, don't you do not go back there. Cause that relationship was really bad. Like in high school, there was one time, you know, he was ramming my car with his truck, trying to get me to pull, you know, and he was just the drink and the alcohol would and busting my eardrums, busting my eye. I had to have surgery on my knee, like an abusive relationship forever and ever and ever. And I always thought it was me. Like I could love him enough to change him. Oh. Mm. Well, right. But you can't no. because they're hurting yes. and they're broken. And until they have an encounter There's with God, can do. absolutely. And so it took me a long time to realize yeah. that. But then when I finally did, but then when he started calling me right before, you know, and I was at that point where God, I just want like, a man. Like, I just want to have family. I want to give my daughter everything that I've never have. And I've already screwed it up thus far. Like let's, and then he sent me Trey and, um, Trey is definitely my Boaz. And it's been 18 months into our marriage because I remember thinking, okay, like I'm going to marry a preacher. How's this going to work, Lord? Because we were married within <laughs> six months. So you were already preaching. This was, you oh, were already in ministry. Oh, yeah, I've been in yeah. ministry a long time long at this time. point. Yeah. Right. Well, 25 right. years this year, but at but that time, I'd been in the 19? ministry 15 years. 15, yeah. okay. Years. I'm really good at math. Yeah. <laughs> but on the second date, when, I mean, she but lays she it lays all it out. All on out. It. I can still remember her saying, okay, I'm going to taste stuff. You don't want anything to do with me. I totally get it. I'm like, well, hang on. Let, you know, let me go before the Lord. And So I shared all of that with him, and I'm not, I'm thinking, okay. But then we have the second or the third date, and I was like, okay. And then six months later, we're married. Six months later? It's very short. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. six months. Uh huh. I want to know what you thought. Like, what was that process for you? For me, yeah. well, that's like I really, when she told me all that, because I, I have a degree of understanding of what I'm called to do, and I know the spiritual warfare. I know what it takes to battle and win, and I know that I have to have a strong woman by my side. And that's when we get in my story that my mm -hmm first wife, um, you know, she decided to go left, you mm -hmm. know, and live a totally different life. And so I'm like, Lord, I'm not playing with this thing. Right. I need to know how you see Heather. I need to know, you know, what is her calling? What are her assignment? And so the Lord showed me um, before, after the second date, you know, I got before him of her in this armor that he saw her as a warrior. And he, you know, and I remember him talking to me like, Trey, this is your choice. It's not going to be easy, but she is a warrior, and this is what she's called to do. And you have what it takes to help her get there, but it's not going to be easy. It's your choice. Mm -hmm. So it was like he was talking, like, you know, you can go an easier route, you know, but this is the way I see her. You, she's what you've prayed for. Here she is, you know. And so I was like, okay, I'm in, yeah. you know. And... It was 18 months later because yeah. when we got married, I thought, okay, I'll just be the cute wife that sits on the pew and I don't have to talk to anybody. I don't have to pray with anybody. Like, just, <laughs> I'll just see? sit there and smile, yeah. right? And I did that for a little bit. I'm just because God wouldn't let me, wouldn't release me to tell her what He told me about her. I was just gonna, or I was to just show thinking, me, like, did you know no. that? And vision? and so, he, well, I forgot about the thing because. When we were dating, it was the it was in the summer, and Aunt Brenda, um, well, Trey had been asking me, okay, Heather, so what is your purpose? He asked all the good questions, like makes you start thinking, mm -hmm. right? And he's asking me, so what do you, what is your purpose? What do you think God's called you to do? And I'm like, I don't really know. Like maybe help somebody here or there. I don't really know because I when I went back to college, because, um, you know, I got my GED, and then I went back to college, and I was going to go get my LCD, which is your licensed chemical dependency counselor. I wanted to help people counseling-wise get, free. get yeah. free. And um, then the Fed thing happened, and so I had to quit school um, because some of the people I was going to school with, we also worked together, and they just kind of separated us all. Yeah, and so um, 
Where was I going with Aunt that? Brenda. Oh, Aunt Brenda. Yeah. So Trey's asking me this question and I get off the phone with him and I'm at work and then my Aunt Brenda calls me and she's like, Heather, I want you to come tell your story to my recovery group because her daughter is a, um, an addict and so she is a, she was a leader of a group of parents. What do they call that? Alla, the, the parents of the addict. That they, they have a support group. They have group a support group for, for them. Yeah, it's like that. Al-Anon or Alice something. Yeah, something like that. Um, and so I go down to, and so she, I, I'm talking immediately, I hang up from Trey and she's calling me. Trey asking me, what's your purpose? What do you think God's telling you to do? And then Aunt Brenda calls and I was like, okay, Lord, I get it. Go <laughs> tell people what I've done in your life, right? So 18 months later, after we're married, um, I'm at this women's conference and I'm laying on the floor and I'm asking the Lord, like, okay, Lord, how do you see me? Like, what, how are you going to use me? Like, how do I fit into all of this? Which I probably should have asked that before I got married to Trey, but I was just like, I love him. And we're going to go like, you know, whatever. And so save the world, not knowing what I was stepping into. So we're 18 months into being married. I'm at a conference in Colorado and I'm laying on the floor asking the Lord, how do you see me? How are you going to use me? And he shows me a picture of a Roman full body armor of the soldier. And I'm like, Lord, what? we're talking about me. Yeah. <laughs> How are you going to use me? And he's like, look again. And so I look and, you know, the, the helmet, but it has a ponytail coming out the side of it with the bow on it. And I was like, oh, that's me. <laughs> that's so cool. <laughs> the bow gave it away. The bow and the ponytail. Yeah. Because, you know, like. When your babies are little, when Chloe's little, the bigger the bow, closer to heaven, or it's, however that. I've heard that, yes. Yes. So that's a thing, yes. yes. This is a girl thing. Yes, then. it's a girl okay. thing. Yes, it's a Texas girl thing, yes. maybe, because yes. not, it's not everywhere. But Southern. The great big bows. It, yeah. Yes, the bigger the bow, the closer to heaven, or bigger to That's why I something. wear my bows, okay? okay? That's why I wear them. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. <that>. Okay. <laughs> and so I was like, okay. So this is how he sees me. And I come home and I'm telling Trey. And of course, when I tell Trey, he just almost loses it. Like, oh, finally. You know, because it has not... It wasn't easy being married to me, <laughs> especially in the beginning, just because I had so much to come out of, like mm -hmm. oh, yeah. in a normal relationship, like that hasn't, like God hasn't ordained. You would not want to put somebody of his level with somebody where I was at the time, just because I still had so much growing to do. Yeah, we, mm -hmm. we reckon, like when we deal with couples and everything, like Don't. we wouldn't have just in the natural recommended because of how much growing. Yeah, just because right. of not being equally yoked. And that's why I'd like, God, I have to know her willingness level. Yeah. You right. know, if she's really willing, because this is going to be a process. And it was. Did, is this the same? You all had the basically the same vision of the call on your life. Was it the same when mm -hmm. you talked to about it finally? Oh, yeah. When she shared, it was identical. What God is showing me besides the bow. And okay. the ponytail. I didn't see the bow and the ponytail. Yeah. But the armor and just the warrior she was. And so it was just like, wow, only God could do that. But yeah, he wanted sure. to reveal it to her so it would when be hers. I was ready. Yeah. yeah. And not me just telling her, you know, because of course when he says something. But I bet you wanted to. Oh, well, I bet yeah. you wanted to a lot. Like a lot of times you were just like, oh, come I want on, you to get baby, this. don't you quit. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> yeah, the first year of marriage, Trey stayed home, you know, because Trey travels a lot and he rodeos professionally, especially a lot rodeo professionally during the that first time. several years. Yeah. And so he was, he chose to stay home the first year, which is good. Um, but then that means. That we're together a lot and mm -hmm. all the growing and the uncovering yes and then the blended familyness and his kids and chloe and me and his kids and then you know his wife his ex-wife she um i'm just gonna be real um, she operates under that jezebel spirit and then so that but we didn't realize that until years later mm. um what we were dealing with um until the Lord revealed it really to me first. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, Trey, but I'd called Pastor Annette and I'm like, Pastor Annette, this just came up in my spirit. Like, is this a thing? Can the Jezebel spirit really affect, operate through the kids? And she's like, absolutely. And I was like, that's what we're dealing yeah. with. And then when I gave it to Trey, he was like, oh my gosh, like, but it's, it's only the mercy of God. Yeah. Uh, but that's why I wasn't married anymore is because I wouldn't let that spirit Operating shut home, shut down yeah. my voice and and control and well he knew she operated under it you know but, yeah but he wasn't seeing it on his kids because love and those yeah. are my yeah. babies and um but I didn't deal with it right to begin with like but I wasn't in that place where I had that understanding of love and walking in because I what I come out of I was very rough I was very um just not loving I mean like I loved my daughter and I loved my husband and I loved the kid his kids 
Um, but I wasn't loving with my words and they weren't wrapped with grace and I could rip you a new one really quick and then be like, well, what's wrong with your face? Oh, it was my tone of voice. Oh, well, don't be what's so sensitive. Yeah, yeah. yeah what's like, your, fix. Yeah. You're gonna be what's okay. What's the purpose of your face? Yeah. yeah, like stop being so sensitive. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh. And you know, I was raised. My grandpa was oil filled. Um, my dad's old country boy, and so they didn't understand the power of their words, and they didn't understand grace and oh, and sure. wrapping their words with love, and so just rough talk is how, what I came out of. And that's not what his kids came out of. And so when I, when they would come at me, not knowing what was going on, I just didn't, I wasn't very loving. I wasn't very merciful. I wasn't very gracious. And that ain't how we're doing it in our house. And it was just, I could, if I would have been more mature spiritually, I think things would have been different blended family wise, but we are where we are. And Lord, help us get yeah, to the right. other side of it. Yeah. God, God is yeah. good, though. And, yeah. Uh, I didn't get saved till I was 19, and yeah. I came out of a cult. And so oh, wow. I kind of relate a little bit to the deconstruction that you go through, like mm-hmm. processing through, like, why do I even do this? Yeah. Why do I have this reaction yeah. to that? Yeah. Because it would be weird things that would, like, pop up. And mm-hmm. Ryan was real gracious with me. Um, but I was like, I was like, I don't know why I responded like that. I'd get off the phone with a family member, and then I'd be ugly and he's like, I can't, I don't know if, yeah. if you're going to act like this, we can't have a conversation. I was like, oh, it's that. And then I could see it and deal with it. Yeah. yeah. So I kind of understand some no, of that. It's, I like so much of your story I relate to. And then y'all's together, like it's, it's very relatable to me personally. But I think whenever you've like gone through so much trauma too, you know, we talked about like, when you were talking about your abortion, abortion, Mm -hmm. like it came up way later in life. Well, I feel like whenever we go through traumatic things early on in our lives, like there's a lot of times that some like of my previous trauma will come up in in the way that I talk or the way that I say things or Mm -hmm. just my reaction to things. And I, like you said, you don't know why you did things, but then you're like, Oh, it was like, this is how I've always operated. I've always, and it's those traumatic experiences and the trauma in your life coming out in your reactions and the way you talk the way you function and it's whenever you realize it that's whenever you can address it but if you don't know you don't know like you don't know that this is why I'm doing this or this is how I react like yeah yeah, it's 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 heavy and it's a lot to process especially when you're dealing with like multiple families and exes and Mm -hmm. parent like your children's other parents and things like Mm -hmm. yeah I yeah it's hard it It is is. hard but there's always there's grace and then growth like transformation it can change thank the lord for transformation yeah. right yes. yeah it's yes. that goodness of god that again leads you to repentance right yeah that when oh, you see it absolutely. then you're like oh okay yeah. thank yeah. you and yeah. i just want to have eyes to always be able to see it right because in the beginning i did it and i'm thinking it's him i'm thinking it's them like mm-hmm. there's nothing wrong with me like what's wrong with you yeah <laughs> um but he was so he was man, like to walk it out. I mean, and, but handled me like with love and grace and never talked to me the way like I talked to him. Cause I, again, very rough, like with my words or just, and he's been the constant. It reminds me cause Joyce Myers talks a lot about how Dave handled her and loved her through to where she's at. And I'm just like, that, that was Trey. Trey's loved me through and never, I mean, of course there's been the moments where he's like, okay, I've had enough. Like get a hold of yourself. <laughs> like, this <laughs> is enough. And I'm like, and it's one of those moments you're like, do I really make it that hard? Oh my gosh, Lord, help me not be that person. Cause that's not like my heart. It's just quit being so selfish. Stop acting like a two year old. It's, it's time to grow up. It's time. Mm-hmm. Let's go forward. Like well, and us having those, I mean, those points where, her going through the peeling back stages of me having to walk in there because of just the heaviness and the pressure and the shame and the all the stuff from her past would try to just shut her down and having to get a hold of her. Heather, this is who you are. You you yeah. gotta get a hold of yourself. Open your mouth. You've got to declare the word. Yeah. We're not quitting. We don't quit. That's we don't do I mean, and just going to battle with each other over her destiny and purpose. And I'm so thankful because she could have quit. But she didn't quit. And if she didn't have you to oh, tell her yeah. these things, then it could have happened a long time oh, ago. Right. You would have slipped. Yeah. 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 I'm very thankful. Yeah. That because he would come in there. There'd be times like when I was walking out of like the abortion or just the shame from my past. Because every time I used to in the beginning, when I would tell my story, it would shut me down afterwards. Mm-hmm. Just the shame. And oh, my gosh. And I remember um, we'd been married several years at this point, And um, 
they're not my spiritual parents, but they're like my mentors. They married Trey and I, but Trey and this family um, have the same spiritual parents. Yeah. And so I'm grandfathered into the spiritual parents <laughs> that are now have transitioned to heaven. But I, um, her name's Pastor Lynette, and I hold her voice very dear to me because she spoke to me before we got married, telling me, like, I see you from the pulpit. I'm not, like, prophesying that over you. And I was like, she does not know what she's talking about, like, not knowing what I was stepping into or not knowing what God was fully going to use me, the capacity right. he was fully going to use me in. And Trey would have to come in there, and he would machine gun word at me, like, because you hear him sometimes, he gets on a roll, and he's going really fast, and it's like... With yeah. the word. that's how I felt because there was these times and it would show oh the the pastor Lynette's church they're out of Colorado and they started doing this blog thing for the cowboy world and oh, so yeah. they did a blog they asked Heather tell us how God is real to you and I'm like you know I have no <laughs> idea what you're and this was like a few weeks after what God showed me how he showed me I was yeah. who I was the armor with the ponytail. right yeah. and I'm like all right here you go and so I laid it all out in this blog post everything we're sharing here but in a blog form and uh, it went across the cowboy world, and we're at this roping the day it went out. And George, my George Strait used to have this big roping, and I would do the church service for him and everything. Nice. And the day, yeah, is and so the day that they publish it, we're out here, and so there's thousands of people. people. And I've it, got girl after girl <laughs> yeah. after girl coming up to me, and I'm like, oh, I feel so exposed. I feel so naked. I'm like, oh my gosh and then I have my my mom's husband at the time oh my gosh I cannot believe you would put this out on oh my gosh what are people gonna think about me and think about it and I'm like shut up it's not even about you yeah. and so then I get that you ain't gonna and because he's making me mad with his words and I'm like I'm not listening to you like this is what God's told me to do and this is what I'm doing and then I have all these women coming up to me and they're like oh my gosh and then you're like oh, I'm so vulnerable right now like oh my gosh and so it took me a while to get to that place to like this is who I am. Mm -hmm. That is not who I am. That's just part of my past. Yeah. And so it's been quite the journey, but there were times where like Shane would try to shut me down. And I remember one time it was so heavy on me. Like I could not open my mouth and declare the word out. And I'm like, Trey, I can't open my mouth. Like I just feel like, you know, oppression, how it mm -hmm. tries to come on and shut you down. Mm -hmm. But I'm thankful that I have him. And I've been taught through this church that how to fight and how to recognize it. Cause sometimes you don't even recognize it, yeah. but we are taught here. Thank the mm -hmm. Lord that we're yeah. taught here. And so just recognizing and him helping me and machine gunning word at me. And what she means by that is there's time when she wasn't able to open her mouth because of the guilt and shame. I would come in and just start declaring this is what the word says about you, about your sin, about your shame, about your guilt, about just to lift it off of her till she could begin to get in there with me and open her own mouth. But you could feel it lift. Yeah. And that's what is so cool. And then one time when I would go back, I just, because sometimes I think we can get free from stuff or I know that I have gotten free from stuff and, or I would go back home to my hometown. Mm -hmm. And this is when we still lived in Burleson and I came home and I was, and it was just like a heaviness and it was like almost a revert personality back to the old me. And Trey's like, do you feel that heaviness on you? And I'm like, of course I like, I, I guess, like, I don't know. He's like, do you see your behavior, your words? And I'm like, okay. And he started praying and it was like that old spirit tried from my hometown, tried to reattach itself mm -hmm. back. And that's happened to, uh, to me several different times that twisted, just it, addictive, mm -hmm. all that, but it's a spirit and it really is a spiritual thing. Cause I can, f I, oh, there's yeah. been several times and one uh, that the Danny Dietz thing, mm -hmm. I can feel it trying to attach to me and trade just declaring the word and I can feel feel it physically feel it leaving my body and the weight of it gone and I'm like like you can't talk me out of that like you because some people don't believe in the spiritual stuff so much or they don't believe it's so much in oppression or generational curses or any of that and I'm like when you have real yeah yes. and when you have an experience and you encounter it just like the presence of the Lord that drops you to your knees you can't tell me that right. th that it's not real like too late. I've already encountered right. it. <laughs> like it's so real. Well, and then you learn like uh, one can put a thousand to flight, two can put ten thousand to Absolutely. flight, and that like you're like, oh, we just walk that out. Like <laughs> yeah. that yeah. happened right now for yeah. me. I've been in those experiences. Like, mm -hmm. oh, oh yeah, this is what the word means when it says that. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 It's, it's not. It's good, but it's inspiring. It's, it's helpful to hear that these things still like come up in you, mm -hmm. but you're able to 
shoot him down? Because I feel like a lot of times people will hear these stories and they just assume like, oh, everything's good now. None of this stuff ever comes up. You never have to deal with it anymore. But it's not true. Like yeah. those things are definitely real. Temptation is definitely real. Those spirits are definitely real. And Absolutely. if you don't know how to address them and you don't have the resources to shoot them down, then you then you could slip back. But it's it's very helpful to hear that this it still comes up, but oh, yeah. you just have to be ready for it. Oh, you know what I mean? Because Absolutely. it's not everything's perfect and great and you're saved and like you're living la di da this happy life and nothing yeah. ever affects you anymore. Like all those things are just gone and in the yeah. past. But the devil is the devil. Real. He's going to keep trying to get Same at you. You know what I mean? And you oh, have yeah. to have the resources to shoo it away and yeah. to pray it out and speak those things out. Absolutely. Like we, um, we moved my dad in to, um, what's this been two years now? Mm -hmm. uh, we built a garage apartment for him, just a bad situation. And so we moved him onto our place. And, um, and at the time when we moved him onto our place, he was a functioning, I don't even know if you say functioning, but he was an alcoholic mm -hmm. and Trey's like, okay, like, I want you to know, like we're, cause we know he's still drinking, but he wouldn't drink on our place. Well, that we were aware of. He would go drive around and drink and then come back and then go drive around and drink and come back. And I'm like, oh, Lord, help me. And so um, we dealt with this like six months, maybe. Yeah. It might have been a little longer, but I finally I'm like, this is this it. Like, I'm not doing I mean, Trey's like, I want you to know you welcome that on here. The devil's going to start jacking with your mind and he's going to come after you. He's going to come to try to steal the word and put this back on you because. And so and it was a battle and it was so. And so I go down there and I talk to my daddy and I'm like, listen like enough. And it, the, the voice that a daughter has in her father's life, yeah. um, is very powerful. And so I just went down there, talked to him in love and he's been sober now ever since. Yeah. Um, God. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And he did it like cold Turkey, like scare <laughs> us cold Turkey. Like he slept for yeah, like over 30 days. Shut down. I mean, yeah, <clears> it yeah. was that yeah. I would not recommend doing that because of that amount of alcohol. Well, mm -hmm. Yeah. So detox from that level. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. You can do it. That's, Hospitalization. Dangerous. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hello. And I was like, oh, okay. I'm like, oh, anyway, but thankfully he's free. free. Yeah. Yeah. And clean and sober. Um, but the, the attacks on my mind during that whole thing yeah. and Trey's like, and I wasn't going to say anything. Cause I'm like, I got this. <laughs> I got this. Like I know how to open up my mouth and I can battle And Trey's like, finally i'm like if it gets too too bad i know the holy spirit's gonna tell trey because i'm not gonna say anything because i got this i know what i'm dealing with right? <laughs> like i got i got this and trey finally he comes to me he's like so how you doing with your mind and i am or is that how you word it? it was something it was something smart like that not <laughs> smart but like just right to the point like i see it like okay and i was like okay yes like oh, can you help, help me, me fight please help can you help me fight please <laughs> And you just started declaring the word and then you can just feel it lift. Yeah. And I was like, okay, so maybe I didn't have it by myself. <laughs> Thanks for helping. <laughs> so now you travel around and you minister all the time. So I do want to hear what it's like now when you're out ministering, you've gotten victory so many times before. Yeah. Is that as frequent or is it new battles or when you hear someone else's story, does it bring it up? And how do you, how do you walk through that with the word? Yeah. Um, I feel like I'm at a different place now because I have battled it for so long and I do know how to repaint the picture of who I am um, with the word um, on the inside. And in the beginning, it was a struggle. It's not really anymore. Um, but when I do deal with other women, I do, I teach them how to open their mouth because Trey taught me this from the very beginning. Heather, it's not a boxing match up there in your head. Like you're not going to kick the devil's backside by thinking it out. Yeah. Mental gymnastics is yeah. what you call it. And that's, that's yeah. And opening your mouth. And he always says, you know, when you say a red barn, what does your mind see? Well, I like to say leopard heels or I make it girly because like red barn, black dog, those are boring. Like, how about <laughs> leopard heels yes. and sparkle shoes? Like what is your mind? Right. And yeah. so I teach them to open, but to declare God's word that you are free and to break the cycle of addiction. Like Proverbs 420 tells us to be addicted to, well, it doesn't say to be addicted. It says, pay attention to my word, but Johnson paraphrases, 
be addicted to my word. And then the only thing that's going to come from being addicted to God's word, Trace taught me this. Well, it's just the word is freedom and healing and wholeness and deliverance. And so what you pay attention to builds a desire. So don't focus on not using, focus on the word of God, focusing on seeking Jesus and all that other stuff's going to fall off. And it does. And your mind starts thinking different, training your mind to think different. Because some people just, you think you can just quit and not retrain your mind to think properly. Well, that's just not very smart. Yeah. That's not true. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. Well, and what a, you know, the anointing that's on her life, and it's, you know, the Lord allows us to cross a lot of denominational barriers. So we're in every different type of denomination. And it's so cool to see because what God's done in her is so real and so powerful. It's like they forget that they're Methodist or Baptist or yeah. Pentecostal or Church of God or Assemblies of God, whatever it is. And it and it and the anointing is just penetrating those women where they're at and seeing them get free and and just seeing you know where heather's at now is just phenomenal you know and i know it's just a tip of the iceberg for what god is doing and what he's gonna do with her and i take it very serious my responsibility to help her get there to create that environment for her to know god and develop her gift and develop her calling and to flourish and thrive and She's a warrior, that's for sure. I believe that. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> it's an honor to really, truly be a friend of yours. Oh, because well, thank of you. Seeing God in you. It's awesome. Thank you so much for joining us for part one of this two-part conversation with the Johnsons. It was so powerful. I mean, Heather just has an incredible life and ministry and how God just did so many great things in our life. So we hope that you were blessed by it. Uh, linked in the show notes, and we'll include their website as well as some of our favorite messages from Trey and Heather Johnson. But be sure to tune in next Friday for the remainder of this winning conversation.